What is goody, everybody? So, a big trade that just happened, like, within hours ago, and Christian Wood apparently got traded to the Dallas Mavericks. So, Christian Wood, he joins, like, a legit contender with Luka Doncic, a rapidly rising skilled superstar. Like, the Mavs front office are showing Luka that they're doing what it takes to get him some help. And Luka, I'm sure he's pretty happy. And I'm going to just talk about, like, what I think about this trade and what... And then, like, you know, how does it affect both sides? And I may give a grade if I remember to. And the last but not least, I'm going to just talk about how would this affect the Clippers. Like, let's just say we face against the Dallas Mavericks because they're essentially our rival. But first, how would it, it affect the Mavericks? I think it benefits the Dallas Mavericks tremendously because now they got, like, a legit big that could legit, like, have some skills, not just Dwight Powell, who is just... I don't know, he just doesn't really do anything, honestly, like, I don't really know what he does, no disrespect, but he's just an average role player, but what, Christian Wood, he's a pretty skilled big, he can shoot the ball, he can put, get rebounds, um, his defense could be kind of suspect, but um, his defense could be good, but at the same time, that could be not good when they play against stronger bigs, but they definitely benefit a lot from getting all the skills. So now it's not just Luca having all the skills. Like Luca could just have like a partner to give the skill with. Like it could be like a hit or miss for the Dallas Mavericks though. It could be Christian Wood could be like, you know, a really good big for Luca. Or it could just be another Chris Tapps for Zingis, cause we remember when the Unicorn got traded to the Dallas Mavericks poor Zingis. He was considered to be, you know, the next generational big, like the unicorn could dribble, shoot, do everything. But now he went on a steep, steep decline. So essentially, like, like it's it's gonna be pretty interesting for the Dallas Mavericks. Like, but for now, I guess like considering what they give up, they didn't give up like too, too, too much. Even though, like, you know, um. Like, there are some intriguing prospects that the Mavs could try to pursue, though. But eh, I don't really know, like, what are their positional needs or everything. So, I guess it's a good, solid trade for the Dallas Mavericks. So, I guess I would give it, like, um, like a solid A-, minus, I guess. Just because, like, you know, they actually get a legit skilled big to, to pair up with Luka Doncic and... But I don't know. Maybe there could be a lot of prospects that miss they miss out. So that's why I'm skeptical about giving the Mavericks a super high grade. But you know, I guess at the moment I may just give it an A minus, or heck, maybe a B plus. Like with me, whenever I do gradings, I don't have like a straight up oh just a simple grade. For me, I just give like a little range. Like the the best it could be like an an A, but the worst case scenario could be like. Like a B or essentially like a B. So essentially, I just to be fair, I just give it give it A minus just because they finally got someone to pair up with Luka Doncic. Like let's just say that. Now for the um for the Rockets, a lot of people are on the Houston Rockets heads saying, oh the Rockets got robbed or something like that. I don't think the Rockets like. I don't think it was, like, a really bad move to trade Christian Wood. They did get, like, a like little lower than we ever the whole entire NBA fan would expect. But the, here's the thing, though. The Rockets, they're just playing the game of chess. Because the Rockets have the top three pick, the number three pick. So they got guys like Banchero and Chet Holmgren around that area. So, I mean, like, they def so they're definitely going to get a big man regardless. So Christian Wood, he just has has to be gone. So then they also got they also got Alperen Sengun, who's you know a really promising big for the uh, Houston Rockets. Like Sengun, he's pretty nice and he he's shown ability that he could be like a bucket. So pretty solid for for the Rockets. So, 
it definitely frees them room for Shangun, and they get a draft capital. And this draft class, like, it's actually pretty solid. Like, it benefits towards some teams more than others. So that's why, like, it's hard for me to give, like, the Mavericks a grade for, like, um, like, what type of prospect would they, like, want exactly. But they got Christian Wood, and he saw, he saw it, I guess, like, on the offensive end. But defensive end, it could be good, but it could be bad at the same time. But now I'm going to just give, like, a big weakness for – the Dallas Mavericks, like, how this trade could possibly go wrong for uh, the Dallas Mavericks. So, what could really go wrong is Christian Wood, like, like, he just becomes a poor Zingas. Like, he just wants to just shooting threes rather than posting up, or, and another weakness is um, Christian Wood would get bullied down low inside in the paint. Let's just say if you have a guy like um, Ivica Zubak, or or, like, I'm trying to think of a really heavy big man, like, let's just say, an Andre Drummond, or, um, who else, who else is, like, a really, like, big and strong big man, like, let's just say, um, uh, let's just say a guy like Joel Embiid, or, like, heck, let's just say you put a guy like a Wash DeMarcus Cousins against Christian Wood, like, you could essentially kind of bully Christian Wood down low, and it would just be food for the for the bigs. So that is that that those those are the two swing factors for the Mavericks. Technically, it's one because both of them are just the same problem. But I mean, so yeah, just for a reminder, like the swing factors for the Mavericks is um, Chris, like he could just be another Porzingis, or he could just simply get crash down low in the paint. Now, the swing factor for the Rockets. Well, I mean, obviously, like, how it could go on for Rockets is Christian Wood all of a sudden just has a complete breakout year because, you know, Luka Doncic, you could beat Christian Wood in a pick and roll. Christian Wood just gets the job done, and and then the Rockets would definitely be kicking themselves for essentially, like, trading Christian Wood for nothing really much in return, and they have to select the right prospects, too, essentially. Like, I don't know who are they eyeing for, because for sure they have way too many guards, okay? They have too many, like, like point guards and shooting guards, because they got Kevin Ford Jr., they got Jacob, they got Jalen Green, they got Kevin Moore Jr., like, oh my gosh, like a lot of them. So, I don't know who would their target session be, I guess. I don't know about power for, because they moved, like, Christian Wood to make room for Shangun and Banchero, so... Um, it could be interesting, I guess. Maybe they could take another another center if they have, like, a center, but around that area. But anyways, so this is Treat Essentially. So, Christian Wood just went to the Mavericks for the 26th pick. Boban Marjanovic, who's, like, you know, a really good, like, a fan favorite. Trey Burke, who's an average point guard, average solid point guard. And Marquise Chris, who was... Um, who was just, you know, a role player or something like that. So, essentially, the only value is the 26 pick. Like, like <clears throat> the, the Rockets could have definitely got way more in return for just the 26 pick, if I'm being completely honest with you. Like, teams like the Portland Trailblazers would definitely be willing to give up a decent amount more, like, they could just definitely should give, like, they would probably give, like, one first rounder, like, not one, but probably, like, one first rounder and multiple second rounders and throwing, like, guys like, um, Nazi or Little or something like that, so, would have probably got, so the, Ma- the Rockets could have got more, but, I mean, like, uh, if they if they the rod draft correctly in a twenty six pick, I guess like it could be pretty good for the Rockets. So that's the big swing factor. It's just the prospect they select, and they have to take the right one. And but the good thing is they got more draft capital, so they could just use. They have like actually three draft picks this year, which is that is actually pretty good. Like they got like I believe like I want to say the seventeenth pick, and they got twenty six pick. So. If they find a prospect they like, they can just simply use two of these picks to just trade up for 
someone in particular, maybe like a Mark Williams or a Jeremy Sohan or I don't know. I don't know who would they want, but but all these other three players, they're they're essentially probably just gonna be like um I don't know, they're just probably gonna be like not a not really a big factor. I might be wrong, who knows, but well, except maybe Bobon, because Bobon's just going to be the t the fan favorite. Shout out to Bobon. Bobon, really cool dude. But, but yeah, that's just my takes on both sides of the trade. And if I had to give the Rockets a grade for the trade, I'd just give, like, a C plus just because, like, they got, like, like way less than than a lot of fans anticipated. But it was not bad for the Rockets. It was not bad. Don't get it twisted. Like, but it may be bad if Christian Wood blossoms though. So that's that's the that's the problem. Now, like, let just now my the last take is how does this affect the Clippers? So let's just say the Clippers face against the Dallas Mavericks in the playoffs. Like, will it be harder for the Clippers or would it be easier for the Clippers? Honestly, um. It could go both ways because the Mavs may have better offensive juggernaut, but however, we could just easily like ex we could exploit the Mavericks' weakness because Avika Zubak he matches up perfect, perfect. Because we see what Zubak did, he dropped like well like over 20 points or something, and he just simply crushed the living heck out of Christian. We just out rebounded the heck out of him, just outperformed him. Like, he basically just would would basically turn Christian Wood into, like, a little pancake. Like, so, that, so yeah, those are, so, honestly, it could go either way. It could really go either way, because who knows, Christian Wood may improve his bag, and he could be, like, somewhat tough for, for our bigs to guard. But the thing is, Christian Wood, he's not really that big, so... I guess, like, you could wind up even putting guys like Robert Covington on Christian Wood because Robert Covington essentially has the same size. Like, he's a really good, like, power forward defender. So, and Christian Wood is not really much bigger. So, I could see Roko being able to <coughs> guard Christian Wood if, you know, if, if things goes wrong. But... And then, like, when we face the Dallas Mavericks on the offensive end, just feed Zubak the ball as much as you can on Christian Wood. Because, boy, Zubak is just going to have nothing but food. Nothing but food. So, yeah, those are just, the like, my reaction for the Christian Wood trade to towards the Mavs. Let me know what you think about the takes in this video, and be sure to, like, Leave a comment down below, and I'll definitely talk with you on the comment sections. Do you think it was a great trade for the Mavs? Do you think the Mavs committed a robbery? Um, you, just let me know. Like, just and if you have like any different takes from this video, I would love to hear it because I would love a good old basketball conversation. And as y'all know, um, have a great night and or have a great day. And straight up, peace.